Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is Social Determinants of Health, SDOH, Medical Training and Healthcare Costs. And I'm going to tell you a story. And that's the story of the city of Baltimore and Johns Hopkins Hospital. So Johns Hopkins is where I did my residency in internal medicine. And as many of you know, it's known as one of the best hospitals in America, one of the top hospitals in the world. And the Johns Hopkins Hospital and the city of Baltimore have a very unique relationship. And it's a relationship that we're going to go over today. And that is... Baltimore has a lot of social problems, and the people of Baltimore have innumerable challenges that manifest themselves as very complex, severe diseases that I, as a resident, and all the other residents and all the medical students there, we essentially got the benefit of learning how to diagnose and treat all these incredibly horrible diseases because of the really bad social situation in Baltimore. And I'm going to go through that in detail. So, there's a huge drug problem in Baltimore. So, the drug of choice in Baltimore is heroin. It is, Baltimore has the highest heroin use per capita of any city in America. In fact, one in ten people in Baltimore uses heroin. And they typically shoot it up. And what does that mean? That means that it causes endocarditis, which is a severe infection of the lining of the heart that you get from using dirty needles. It means hepatitis C, which is transferred through the use of needles. It means HIV through the use of dirty needles. So we saw a ton of these diseases in my training at Hopkins. Okay, next up, alcohol abuse, which leads to pancreatitis. Alcohol is probably the most common cause of, of severe pancreatitis, which can potentially kill you. Okay, cirrhosis of the liver. Al use of alcohol and, and alcoholic cirrhosis is not only a risk factor for hepatocellular carcinoma for liver cancer, but it's also a risk factor for many other cancers as well, including breast cancer. So we would see a ton of cancer. Okay, obesity. So obviously leads to diabetes, heart attacks, stroke, congestive heart failure, uh, real bad, like diabetic foot infections. We'd see these horrible infections. The number one cause of dialysis is diabetes or diabetic retinopathy. We saw so many patients on dialysis. It's like it was unreal how many people in Baltimore are on dialysis. I mean, it's a total travesty. Okay, and then there's obesity is a risk factor for a whole bunch of different types of cancer as well, and in Baltimore, unfortunately, is actually the most obese large city in the Northeast. So the obesity rate in Baltimore is higher than Philadelphia, it's higher than Washington, D.C., it's higher than New York, and it's higher than Boston. So a lot of times people think of, you know, the South as having a lot of challenges with obesity. city of Baltimore has a lot of challenges with obesity as well. Okay, next up, gang violence. So, it manifests itself as gunshot wounds, and especially as spinal injuries. So we would see gunshot wounds to the spine that would make people paraplegic and quadriplegic, and they would have all sorts of chronic medical problems as a result of their uh, paralysis. Now, Baltimore is ranked number four in the country for violent crime, and it's ranked number two for violent crime. Now, we, um, it was incredibly challenging in terms of Decreased health insurance coverage, or low health insurance coverage, and low access to medication coverage, being able to afford your medications for patients at Hopkins. We'd see this all the time. And it would manifest itself as diabetic ketoacidosis, or DKA, which is when somebody is on, has insulin dependent or type 1 diabetes, they don't take their insulin, and their, their blood sugar goes through the roof, and their, uh, their blood becomes very acidic. And it can kill you. It lands you in the ICU, and it was very common for us to see these patients with DKA. Hypertensive emergency where your blood pressure goes through the roof. One of my attending cardiologists at Hopkins said, look, hypertensive em emergencies is a social disease. It's a social disease because these people are typically, like, they're, they're not taking their medications, oftentimes because they can't afford them. Okay, or they have so many other issues with various insecurities that their blood pressure is so low on their list of priorities. Okay, and then finally, 
like the screening levels for cancer were incredibly low. And as a result, we would see these incredibly, and people would not see a primary care physician. They didn't have access to a primary care physician. And so their screening rates for cancer were super low. And you would see these incredibly advanced cancers as well. So not only would people have cancer, they would have incredibly advanced cancer because they didn't have any sort of early screening or intervention uh, in the outpatient setting. Now, a couple of points I want to make. One, I want to be very clear that I am not indicting or incriminating or judging the people of Baltimore at all. If I grew up and lived in their circumstances, I would be in the exact same situation they're in. I mean, we all would. I would be on drugs. I would be on alcohol. I'd be obese. I'd probably be in a gang or the victim of that gang violence. I wouldn't have any health insurance or access to affordable medications. Like, listen, th there is no judgment at all for the people of Baltimore. At all. Okay, so that's point number one. Point number two is is that the fact that these people have to suffer like this in order for me to get like, to see these horrible diseases and therefore get a ton of experience and training and then subsequently benefit for that, like, it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way, right? So like, fine, Hopkins is one of the top hospitals in America. What's another top hospital in America? The Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Does Rochester, Minnesota have all these social ills that Baltimore has? Probably not. And you can still train amazing physicians, so it doesn't have to be this way. And listen, Johns Hopkins has done and continues to do things to outreach in the community to try to improve it. Now, it obviously takes economic, right, so unemployment and, you know, they have, believe it or not, they had a Bethlehem steel plant called uh, Sparrows Point in Baltimore that used to employ 60,000 people in one location. They had a huge GM factory. I mean, Baltimore has, so has lost so many manufacturing jobs and the economic opportunity in Baltimore is so much less than it used to be that this is a multifactorial problem that, you know, Hopkins itself is not going to fix on its own. I mean, there's so many things they can do. That is not the point for the video today. The point is, is that one, I'm not judging. Two, there's essentially a symbiotic slash parasitic relationship between medical training and social determinants of health. And then finally, number three, in regards to healthcare costs, look, Hopkins loses money on their hospital operations. The head of the hospital talked to all of us residents is like, look, We've sort of given up trying to make money on our hospital operations, okay? Our patients don't have insurance. They're on Medicaid or on Medicare. We, make, we, just, we lose money on, like, every patient we have, right? Because not only is the, is the reimbursement per unit of care low, but we just have a ton of illness and disease that we need to treat at these very low reimbursement levels. So what is Hopkins doing in part to address this? They've gone out and they've bought a whole bunch of suburban hospitals in the Washington, D.C. area, including one of which is called Suburban Hospital. And I grew up right next door to Suburban Hospital. It's in Bethesda, Maryland. It is an incredibly wealthy town just outside of Washington, D.C. and a very wealthy county just outside of Washington, D.C. And though the vast, almost none of the patients we had at Hopkins in Baltimore had commercial insurance. At Suburban, almost all of their patients probably have commercial insurance. Uh, so they're, they're using the much higher rate of reimbursement at places like Suburban Hospital to cross-subsidize the money that they're losing hand over fist in Baltimore. So employers, if you're an employer that has employees in Maryland, you are helping to pay for the social ills of Baltimore and the disease that it causes. Everyone has to pay the piper, okay? There, there is no, it, it comes back around. If you roll a stone, it's gonna roll back on you, okay? So there, there is no employer in America that is not in some way, shape, or form cross-subsidizing. Frankly, the, the social determinants of health that we just outlined here so you, it might, it's obviously not obvious to you. You don't see this on a daily basis. And when you think about social determinants of health, you're thinking in terms of your own employee population. But just know, there's essentially a tax 
on you for these social ills, there's a tax for you as an employer, and it's borne by the hospital and then transferred to you. And that's my point for today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.